function since it, ha it uses robotics and AI and know this complex stuff that we're going to talk about next. Complexity is really, really high, 10 out of 10, because we're using so many technologically advanced systems, AI robotics, that are now getting to become more and more uh, efficient. So we're, we're guessing that in the future years, this number hopefully is going to be lower, and the design and construction cost, of course, is really high, not only due to the software, but due to the hardware as well. Now, as a second method, we have the next system, which is the system that we call the droplet. First of all, we have all the portion of uh, given a file, uh, the code can function even if it cannot be run with a high speed. Thus, the spacecraft mechanic will not proceed with the forces uh, from the law of momentum conservation. Moreover, we have given the collusion to this tool because uh, the net prevents the object from breaking into smaller pieces and creating more debris uh, in the space. However, there is the risk that the object creates uh, oscillations. Also, the fuel consumption will be free, as the spacecraft does need to have high velocity in order to function. So the complex parameter was given a free because the net is a simple mechanic that is compatible with different size of debris and, and has a reduced requirement, although it is hard to control it. At last, the design construction cost we have given a board because uh, it has a simple mechanics, but it is uh, very difficult to take it from the ground. Uh, now, the third method is the harp mechanism. The <coughs> uh, harp projectile consists of a set of barbs near the tip which latch onto the target. Firstly, uh, we have graded it with a name as far as force and torques are concerned, since the spacecraft listing needs to develop high speed in order to reach the object and then generate more force, force so that the harpoon can penetrate the space debris. Moreover, the collision uh, risk has nine. It's a really high number, of course, since the harpoon mechanism counts on penetrating through debris and there is a high risk of destroying it. As fuel consum consumption is concerned, it's also high to seven. It needs to develop high speeds in order to reach the space debris and to ensure stabilization. The complexity uh, has an effect uh, because although it is, related, it is a relatively simple mechanism uh, compatible with other ones, it still has some difficulty in predicting the movement of the target and there might be some um, accidents. And finally, uh, as far as the design is concerned, it's okay, it has a three because it has a simple design and can be tested also at the ground. Um, now, as you can see, the, more, uh, the most efficient uh, method is the second one that Cotodinos presented. Uh, since it has a smaller score, it is uh, the most promising capture uh, method due to the multiple advantages, but it needs some further development. And in order if a further development to happen, we need cooperation worldwide. Uh, moreover, we'd like to mention that uh, concerning the transfer of the Terra satellite, we used one single maneuver since it was the most efficient and we didn't need uh, so much fuel consumption. And, well, that's all. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much for the excellent presentation. Really, very excellent presentation. And, uh, it shows that uh, you have really understood the you have really understood the problem. And uh, the presentation uh, it was really uh, enthusiastic. Uh, first of all, uh, let, let let me ask you: Have you a recent uh, Example of uh, a space debris that uh, enter to uh, atmosphere and uh, at the end uh, fall in, into the earth or in the uh, ocean. Have you heard about the recent uh, example of, uh, of uh, such a problem? A small debris or? No, a big debris. Yeah. Have you heard about uh, Sky Palace, the Chinese uh, yeah. station? Oh, yeah. So this, 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 this was. Uh, 
finally uh, uh, fall to, to the ocean and uh, nothing uh, happened. Okay. Uh, my question is about your calculation uh, dealing with uh, the, the different velocities when you try to, uh, to put uh, the, uh, your, your, uh, your debris in, uh, in uh, Hoffman transfer. Uh, based on what I know and uh, based on calculations I have done in the past, I think that uh, this, this uh, velocity is extremely high. I'm, I'm not pretty sure that uh, this, uh, this calculation is not correct. Uh, the, 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 this is, I, 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 I cannot follow the, the, the calculation, but I'm, I'm just saying that uh, this is uh, extremely high. For example, uh, some calculations we have done in the, in the past, the difference uh, from uh, uh, the elliptic orbit from opposite to, po to, to place the, the satellite in, uh, in uh, the geostatic uh, orbit, the difference velocity was uh, something like uh, 14, 15 uh, kilometers per second. And uh, this is. Uh, 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 it's actually 3.7. Yeah, it's not uh, 3,000. Ah, okay. okay. 3.7. But for 3.7, at the end, you need this, this amount of uh, fuel. Well, as I said, we were a bit hesitant about that. Yeah. Because. Okay, now the numbers uh, make sense. Okay, you, you, your calculations are for sure correct. But this amount of, uh, of uh, fuel seems that uh, it is not, uh, I mean, this, this operation happened very, for example, if, if you would like to, to put in, uh, in uh, geostatic orbit uh, uh, telecommunication satellite, uh, this is the, the process uh, you, you follow, this uh, Hoffman transfer. Uh, the satellite cannot transfer uh, in order to be at the final uh, stage of uh, its orbit. Cannot transfer this, kind of, this amount of uh, of fuel. Yes, of course. That's why we also mentioned that we were a bit hesitant about. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I realize this, and I appreciate. But if you, if you see in our report, in our written report, we <coughs> actually we've had some more thinking about what we have done wrong because this result for sure didn't sound to us well. We, we imagined like a satellite with a huge fan, a whole fan, yeah. traveling with a fuel. Uh, Taking consideration of the uh, telecommunication satellite is uh, six tones. Yes. And uh, you need uh, yeah, five more for, 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 for the sure. population. Something went wrong. Okay, I have a question. Sure. I want to, to analyze me uh, in an analytic way uh, how you will uh, catch. Uh, with spacecraft X, the satellite here. Um, I want to explain all the equations and why you use these equations. Um, one second. Uh, firstly, as we can see uh, in the image, uh, those two need to meet somewhere. The Terra satellite moves like that, the spacecraft like that. Um, so, um, we needed to estimate to estimate the wait time, and we needed to find the final phase angle. And so, uh, since we wanted the final phase angle, we needed the lead angle, and that's how it all escalated. We need the angular velocities, the the time of flight, and basically thinking of uh, the wait time, we had to find the rest of it, the ones. What is the time of flight? What do you use? What time of flight? What do you use? The time of flight of the SpaceX. Of the SpaceX. Okay, and uh, the SpaceX. Okay, and the A lead? It, it is the angle. I also had a specific image that showed the angle. It's the angle that the Terra satellite uh, had moved. It was approximately here as we estimated, but the satellite will move in order to meet with the spacecraft. We have this in our written report, if you want to open it, then we can start a listen. Okay, thank you guys, congrats on the assignment. Thank, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you.
where for the port Amirasmus is Magetta, Nick, Dodge, and this uh, reason on Spanish British. Currently, 70,000 Draca blockers of the end, and even not enormous twice are debris. Due to the high opening speeds, even the smallest of these can cause a major damage to any quarter satellite. The reality is that even more space launches will immediately stop. There will still be uh, debris generated by those collisions. In order to contain the problem, guidelines and ISO standards have to be followed and aggressive actions and precautions have to be taken. A common solution for disposing satellites, instead of destroying them in the atmosphere, is to move them to a dead zone called the gradient. These zones can be found above the 36,000 km, because lower in about 35,000 and 800 km lies the highest of the satellite zone, called GEO, geostatical orbit. The current altitude of Terra satellite is at 713 km. Uh, and we want to carry it at 36,010 kilometers. That means inside the graveyard, and this is a great distance. The change of its altitude will become by increasing its speed, something that will increase the centripetal, the centripetal force from the air, and consequently its altitude. For the current solution, we were sent to consider just two dimensions of the plane, as well as, well as the fact that the trajectories around the Earth would be completely circular. This kind of orbit change is called a Homa transfer orbit. Schematically, the route of the satellite will be as follows. Initially, it follows a circular route around the Earth. When the transfer orbit begins, the trajectory will be an ellipsis until it reaches the outer, the outer orbit where it will start doing a circular move again. Uh, point B and point C will have an angular uh, difference of 180 degrees, even if this term is not possible. Uh, furthermore, furthermore, in points B and C, the spaceship will have to change its velocity uh, with, uh, at a magnitude that is calculated by certain formulas. These are the formulas. Here, and here are the formulas for the initial and final state. This is the linear velocity and the angular velocity. And these are the, these are the magnitude of the velocity change for points B and C. Finally, this is the time uh, where the spaceship will be in this uh, Hohmann transfer orbit. Uh, for the specific problem given, these are the numerical results. We see uh, the, uh, the move will last in about 95.5 hours. And the, the speed changes here and here have to be uh, this number. Next question was to calculate the fuel needed for such a maneuver, given the specific impulse. Using these formulas, we can calculate the specific fuel consumption best and the fuel for each one of the velocity change next. No fuel is spent when the spaceship, uh, when the satellite just moves and the uh, velocity remains stable. Using that formula, we find the exact number, but an important notice is that for the first change, we must include the fuel required for the second one, along with the mass of the spacecraft. So, uh, in this velocity change, the velocity, we don't change only the velocity of the satellite, but we also change the velocity of the tank with the fuel for the second change. So the mass of the, of the, of the, the mass that we, the, whose velocity we change is a bit bigger. Uh, the second problem was to, uh, we had to solve was to catch the satellite using a spacecraft which was found in a lower orbit at about 500 kilometers. We will use the Homa transfer orbit again, and with the difference that we must calculate the start time in a way that both the, the spacecraft and the satellite reach the outer orbit and at the same time and the same point. 
using the formulas from before, we find that the time of the transfer trajectory, this time, will be about 74 seconds. In this time, the satellite does a, the satellite does a single cyclical move and traverses angle delta theta 2, this angle. Uh, the spacecraft will traverse 180 degrees as it is predicted from the common tra uh, transfer orbit. Consequently, the angle between the objects just before the, or the common orbit begins has to be P minus delta theta 2. So this is the angle. That means that the wait time from now until the transfer orbit begins is calculated this way and has to be 105.7 seconds. Several solutions have been developed in the past in order to solve the problem of space waste. As we can see, here we will present you the three key methods. The first one, robotic arm, is a contact consuming method with stick connection. The capturing is difficult because the target does not provide with any information to chaser and may be dampened. The contact between the chaser and the object is avoidable as the hydrogen collision and uh, that generates debris. The arm is heavy weighted and more suitable for medium sized spacecrafts. We can furthermore improve its accuracy with the tapping hand efficiency and by minimizing the impact of the contact. The next one is the hand mechanics. It's a basic method that penetrates the body of the object in quick distance in order to transport it to the graveyard. It's relatively light weighted due to two few requirements. The target can vary in size as no wrapping point is required. We can penetrate the body of the object multiple times as the holes that may be present do not affect the capsule, although it produces no space waste, so accuracy is limited. The last option we can use is a net, the net capturing method. A canister that contains the net is detected and wraps up the host. The shape and size of the net could be varying depending on the situation and the target object you want to capture. The accuracy requirement for the accuracy requirement for collecting a big group of small objects are relatively low. However, bigger objects can be collected too. Here we present you the table with our scores for each method. According to our evaluation, as you can see from the total scores right here. The optimal, the optimal method is the net capturing one, as due to its versatility, as it's suitable for small and bigger objects. Although we suggest that the, that the combination of the net and harpoon mechanism could be used, could be used, could be proved more useful, as it is, as it combines uh, the advantages of more of both methods. Thank you very much. Thank you for the presentation and a uh, very good job uh, for, for the period, for the eight hour uh, period we had. Uh, I would like to uh, see once again the results uh, dealing with uh, the uh, calculation of uh, home and uh, transfer. Uh, this, this one, this one. Okay. Uh, when you uh, okay, you you fully understand what uh, you are going to do and uh, you describe it very very carefully. My my question is, uh, when you are going to transfer these uh, changes in velocity to fuel, then the amount of uh, fuel you report is extremely high. And um, it is not extremely high if you think that an ordinary satellite needs about 200 tons of fuel this year in order to maintain in, uh, in orbit and keep and be able to maintain with certain corrections. 200 tons? 200 tons uh, in this year. year, yes, according to the statics, statistics of NASA. Uh, the, average, the average satellite, some more, some less. And so this is about 25% um, uh, of the total amount of the year's fuel. This is uh, 40 tons. 
step of 42, so it is about 20 to 25 percent. How, how much uh, uh, telecommunication, a typical telecommunication satellite uh, weighs? A typical FM about uh, four to five tons. Such a base is going for out um, for us for the Terra satellite, which uh, weighs exactly five five thousand and one hundred and ninety kilos. Uh, we didn't set about the telecommunication satellite. No, no, I'm, I'm saying that. Uh, a telecommunication satellite weighs uh, six tons. Yes. And this uh, and this six tons, uh, you put it in uh, orbit. Okay. Yes. And uh, they are going for a geostatic uh, orbit because it's a telecommunication satellite. Then uh, this means that uh, this uh, the the telecommunication, for example, a last uh, sat phone. Which uh, launched uh, some uh, a month ago, uh, transferred to just that COVID uh, through this uh, process, this uh, home and transfer. Yes. Okay. For sure, they do not need 40 tons of uh, fuels. They need less. Much less. Yeah. Much less. I have also a uh, question. I don't understand completely what is the fuel needed. For second velocity change and uh, for first velocity change, can you? So what, why this is uh, bigger than this? No, no. What uh, for what reason? For what reason this is bigger than this? No, no, no. I mean, like uh, I want to, uh, to see to show me again the diagram and to tell me what. Are the velocity first and second? And the first velocity so that the elliptic uh, movement begins, okay. and then the second one so that the elliptic movement starts and okay. starts okay. opening okay. again. Okay. This is the first velocity stage from here to this move, mm -hmm. to this move, and from this move, stages to this move to the second velocity stage. Okay. It's both a change of direction and magnitude. Okay. And I think that the time that you calculate uh, for a uh, spacecraft. X to catch the satellite there is Okay, I think it is small, but it's okay. Thank you guys. Congrats for you your presentation. Just, just final question. Uh, can you argue why uh, satellite orbits are planar? Lights uh, are planar are on the same plane. Yes, uh, it's it's clear. It, when you put a satellite in orbit, then uh, it follows a planar uh, orbit. The, the, the orbit is planar. Uh, Can you argue why? And because it is well planar, and the, they wouldn't have the center of the Earth as the center of the deck of their orbit. Yes, but uh, this is uh, something that uh, we impose, or this is something which is uh, the nature imposes? Uh, this is something the nature imposes, because if the, if, the, if the center of the Earth were the center of the plane, then, the center, then the, uh, there would be a greater center of gravity very near to the center of the plane. So the, the, so the orbit would change and <coughs> The force align to the to that center. The force that act on the satellite, which is the centripetal force of the center of the Earth. Yes. Okay. Since this is a central force, yes. uh, this, this, this means that uh, you uh, you have uh, a constant uh, a constant force. Then no, 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 no. Uh, this 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 uh, H, uh, which is the the angular uh, uh, angular momentum of the system is constant, and because of the angular momentum of the system is constant, this means that uh, the uh, vector is constant, which means the its value is constant and its direction is constant. Because the direction is constant, the uh, the the orbit must be planned. Bye guys. Thank you very much. <coughs>
Monday. Yang kalian sendiri minggu ya, so kalian invest di office yang tinggi. And today we are going to scrutinize the subject of space debris. Alright. First and foremost, I'm going to analyze the dangers and problems that these debris create. So, the biggest problem they create is the severe damaging of various spacecrafts, which are used due to the high speeds at which the debris orbit the Earth. In addition to that, by falling back towards the, the debris <coughs> and alter the atmosphere. Furthermore, the collisions above would set off Kessler, the Kessler syndrome, in which the result, the result of the debris would destroy the satellites and so on, with the result uh, that low Earth orbit would become unusable. Last but not least, these collisions would jeopardize manned and unmanned missions or even create political conflict, conflicts between countries. Okay, let's go to the mathematical problem. Uh, I'm Dimitrius and I study electrical engineering at the University of Sydney. So we have task K, uh, we have the Terra satellite, and we need to move it from its, or from its orbit to the graveyard orbit. Uh, and we need to calculate the fuel that will be made. So this is the equation for the fuel. Uh, this is the mass of the machine, the mass of the, of the satellite, and this is the change in velocity that we will calculate. So we will calculate this. Okay. Uh, the method we will use is Thomas transfer. Uh, this is the initial uh, orbit of the satellite. And with one, uh, with, uh, with the change in velocity, we will move it elliptically, and we will get it here to the bigger orbit, which is uh, we calculated the the orbit, the uh, the the rate of the orbit, the gradient orbit, I think. And this will have this is the rate of the Earth. This is the altitude of the zero. And plus uh, third per 300 meter kilometers for this, this is the very very slope. Okay, it should be 300 meters apart from the other one. And we, we, we have two changes in velocity here uh, to go elliptically and here to go in the final orbit. And after calculating that, I have all my calculations in the report. We measured that this is the fuel that we will need. Okay, it's too much, but the rate, the ratio, the radius uh, is very, very big. The alternative that we thought is common, a very big common transfer. Uh, they will use, they use two elliptical uh, two elliptical bodies, one to send it very far and one to send it back. Uh, most of the times it's very effective, but well, this is wrong. Okay, uh, sorry for that. If we if we look at the at the graphic, uh, this uh, well, this ratio of the two orbits of the two is not very good. So. So in uh, the second question, we we have a spacecraft that will pick up the satellite, and we will uh, okay the satellite uh, the spacecraft will uh, will move uh, again with common transfer with an elliptical orbit, which will do uh, 108 and 80 uh, degrees. So, uh, if this is the, the satellite, if this is the spacecraft and this is the satellite, they will, uh, while uh, the spacecraft will do this little this little movement, the the, space, the satellite will will do uh, 0 0.978 in radius, uh, radius angle. So uh, this will be the angle uh, between them. And after this, this will be the angle. Okay. 
and we I I calculate the relative angular uh, velocity between them, and I we found that this is the time that it will break until it starts with movement. Hello, my name is Chris Topetis. Uh, all these are the me available methods for active PDF uh, model. Our third option uh, is uh, net uh, coupling. It's a very simple idea. Uh, we, drew, we drew the net in order to capture a piece uh, of uh, material and then drag it down to Earth's uh, atmosphere where it uh, will bend up. This mechanism uh, consists of four flying weights in each corner of the net. Some uh, different concepts. Our next met method is uh, a robotic arm. It is widely used on our orbit uh, missions, uh, but it's very challenging to, to be used uh, so, uh, on removal missions. However, it has a very low uh, collision risk. Uh, hello, I'm George. I'm from Salniki. So, about the, the harpoon mechanism. It is a relatively new technology, and the harpoon mechanism with a barb solid stick is shot from the chaser satellite and then pulls the debris either into the chaser or puts them on a graveyard orbit. Okay. So, uh, we have uh, made a trade of table to see which one of uh, these techniques is uh, the most suitable. Um, force and uh, torque at first. Uh, the robotic arm, due to its heaviness and its ability to move in different directions, uh, makes out uh, big forces and torque uh, on the chaser and causes its movement. So it gets a, a 7 out of 10. Uh, the net, uh, on the other hand, is a uh, lightweight, can accept uh, too much compression of uh, force, sorry. And uh, that's why it's rated to 2 to 3. Okay. Uh, the harpoon is also lightweight, only 2.5 kilos, uh, but it has a big uh, launch speed, and uh, that's um, why it gets 6, uh, it has a big, bigger force on the chaser. As uh, for the collision risk, the robotic arm is uh, the safest option uh, because of its uh, accuracy, despite uh, the small uh, chunks um, of debris that might be created. Um, the net is a safe option too, but uh, debris can be created if uh, an appropriate contact is made or uh, if something goes wrong with the uh, wrapping up of the debris. Uh, the harpoon, uh, however, uh, can be risky because uh, more debris can be created uh, by the collision. And uh, so we created them with two, four, and uh, eight respectively. Now, as for the fuel consumption, <coughs> uh, it is uh, highly affected by the, the mass of the structure and the mechanism and uh, the need for uh, maneuvers. So, net capturing and uh, harpoon are rated with uh, just three, as we see, and the robot gun with five because uh, it's heavier. Uh, as far as complexity is concerned, uh, robotic arms are very difficult to use uh, in space, as I already said. Uh, they require uh, adequate synchronization to ensure that the uh, capturing point is all, always directed uh, towards the service, the service satellite. Uh, this topic is not necessary in our case uh, because uh, the satellite is uh, uh, still operating, operational, so we know which care. Uh, finally, we should uh, minimize the influence. Uh, net uh, is required uh, taking into consideration the uh, relative speed, uh, rotation and angular uh, velocity, and the, the geometry of the object. So we have uh, written 7, 5, and 2. Uh, while har harpoon is very simple to use, since uh, no grabbing uh, points are required. Uh, at the other end of the spectrum, it's a, flex, uh, it's a flexible connection uh, point uh, with a satellite chaser. It's difficult uh, to predict the movement uh, of the target uh, after it's getting hit. Uh, finally, uh, design and construction costs. Uh, robotic arms are costly, however, they can be used again and again in different missions. Uh, 
I'm on the Iron Ring, the initial investment. Net has a price approximately 140,000 US dollars. Nevertheless, it is used only once. Uh, and uh, Harpoon can be both single, uh, single use and uh, usable. And the, and the construction may cost is very low because the uh, material is defined uh, widely used. Thank you very much. Thank you for, for the presentation. I would like to first of all to, to see once again your calculations uh, for the case of uh, for the second case of uh, uh, the, the, the second problem of uh, the orbit. <coughs> The, the SpaceX and the, 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 to, to move it from uh, one end to the other. Do you want to look it in the report? No, no, I, I prefer to, to, to see the presentation. So, uh, I thought maybe we can do it. Okay, let's start from the beginning. <laughs> uh, I calculated this, uh, the, the, the period of the the of the ice. Mm -hmm. And we got the half of the period. And I, I divided with the period from the period of the period. So we got uh, the angle that the satellite will do during this time. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the angle that we do. Uh, after that, uh, I the um, the initial angle that we get was uh, 180 degrees. So I I removed I subtracted that yeah. And this is uh, the time. Is this time is the time that the spacecraft will be in this orbit and wait to do the elliptic movement? Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, this omega here is the relative uh, angular velocity of the two mm -hmm. of the two objects. Uh, I can't get it up there. Yes. So there is my answer. This is there. I I I remove the sides. So I body that and do that. How many days is this? How? How many days is this? Okay. I don't know. Days. Uh hours. Days. Can I ask you uh, one more question? No, okay. Currently, the, the space debris is, uh, is a realness. And uh, in the future mission, the idea is that uh, any satellite must uh, be equipped with the system that uh, at uh, the end of its uh, operating uh, life will uh, deorbit the satellite and somehow will uh, do not create any kind of uh, debris. Have you any idea about how, how you can implement this, this kind of uh, equipment in a, in a satellite? For example, you, you, if you launch a telecommunication satellite, uh, how, uh, how you can equip this uh, telecommunication satellite in such a way that after 25 years of operation, uh, the satellite will uh, demolish at the end of its uh, operational life and uh, no debris will remain in space. Have you any idea about? No. Uh, 
Is it really SpaceX use another vehicle for this? Will it still be first? And when the satellite orbit around there, uh, slowly it, it decomposes. Mm -hmm. And after some years, it is it, destructive. Okay? So we can, uh, with few fuels, we can uh, push it in that order, mm -hmm. even if it is okay. It's close to that. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's not good. The, I think it's very safe. Yeah, it is. Uh, the, the, the idea is that uh, they, they have to, first of all, uh, you have to redesign everything because you must uh, design or uh, destroy it. So this means that uh, you must uh, de disassemble the satellite in small pieces in such a way that enter to, to, to the atmosphere to, to burn uh, every single piece. And uh, the, the other uh, way they think about is uh, using uh, space, uh, this uh, the orbit sail. Have you heard about this uh, space sail? And to use the, the solar uh, wind, uh, wind in order to be in the orbit of the satellite. At the end of each operational life, you deploy a sail of uh, several uh, square meters. And uh, uses, uh, using this and uh, taking in, in uh, the advantage of a uh, solar wind, uh, then uh, you, you change the, the, the orbit of the satellite and then enter the satellite into the atmosphere. Yes, uh, and last question. Uh, I didn't see uh, the Delta V uh, in the presentation. You have it in the report, right? Yes. You have calculated it. Guys, congrats for uh, the presentation. Yeah, yes, yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Congrats and good luck.